Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Now this week, we're going to be machining a piece of ceramic. We're going to turn it into an inline filter, which is pretty neat, and I haven't done much of it, but it's what I was tasked to do. So let's go in the shop and get started. And of course, you know, i got some other stuff too. Alright guys, now what I have here is a piece of alumina bisque ceramic, and it's in a semi-fired state, which they claim is machinable. And I don't have a lot of experience with this, but I know that it eats high-speed steel just in a couple seconds. It's extremely abrasive. And uh, this is a project for my work, so we don't own a cutter grinder or a diamond grinder there. And I figured I would bring it here and do it on my time, simply because it's really the only way I can get this project done. And what we're going to do is make this into an inline filter. This material has a 35% porosity, which means gas and stuff can pass through it, and it is a good high temperature filter. Now, we're going to machine this down to about 310 thousandths, just a portion of it, and then we're going to machine a, couple, a special step on it so we can get it in and out of the line that it's going to be inserted in. So let me take you over to the chalkboard and I'll you know, give you the better rundown on what we're going to do to this. All right, guys, now I often walk into the shop and it changes from day to day. I get random words of encouragement on the board. This one happens to be from my daughter. <laughs> so what we're going to do is pretty simple, really. Uh, you know, I often get tasked from work with these one-off projects, stuff that I've never done before and have no experience with, and they just say, here, this is what we want. And I say, well, I'll try. And unfortunately, we don't have a cutter grinder at work or any way of really grinding anything. So I think this material is best suited for diamond grinding. So that's what we're going to do. Right now, it's half inch. We're going to step it down to 300 thousandths. We are going to step down again, come out, and then have a slight knob on the end that will be slightly smaller than this. Then I'll part this off and this will slide into a tube and it'll have a wire wrapped around it for removal when it needs cleaned. I didn't design it. This is just what they want. So let's go over to the cutter grinder and get started. All right, now I've already done one of these, but uh, we come back with a couple revisions. So I'm going to, I figured I'd you know, do one on camera and, or at least the revised version on camera and uh, share it with you. So I'm just going to mark this at about two inches. The only critical dimension on this is really the OD. Um, other than that, it's all left up to me pretty much. It just needs to fit in this tube somewhat uh, uh, freely and, uh, you know, be able to be removed. And what I've done with my, uh, cutter grinder, or my power head here, is put a piece of, I guess you'd call it in the way right now, a uh, cellophane or, you know, clear plastic. And it's just to keep all the dust and the ceramic dust from getting into this power head. You know, this thing's in really good shape, and I want to keep it that way. So, I didn't really have a great way at work to do this. You know, I don't have any hard turning capabilities there, and I definitely don't have a grinder there. And I don't have a collet system for my lathe, although I do have hard turning capabilities, or the tooling for hard turning. So, I haven't tried to hard turn this, but uh, I have diamond ground it, and it really works well. So that's what I'm going to do with this. Just We're just going to grind it down to size and try to put our steps in it with the best methods that we have given the wheels that we have available the limited wheels we have available um, I've got some other diamond wheels ordered I'm just waiting on them to arrive so let me get all set up here and I'll bring you back and we'll start grinding this thing alright so this ceramic dust is extremely dangerous so we got our uh, the vacuum system going good, and I'm wearing a dust mask, so just to be safe, you don't want to get this stuff in your lungs. And you can see this thing doesn't run very true, but that's just the way it is. It's not very straight material. I'm just going to come in and touch. 
and just progressively grind this thing down. Now that this thing's getting thinner, um, I'm about a hundred thousandths, hundred and twenty-five thousandths away from my 300, 310. I'm, I'm shooting for 310 uh, outside diameter. Uh, I'm going to work it down in steps, like I would if I was doing a long piece on the lathe. It'll just, I think, give me less chance of breakage. And then when I get down near the end, I'll do it all in the final passes. And don't kid yourself about a dust collection system you're not catching all the dust so a dust mask you know safety measures go a long way i think um, i mean it's obvious i'm not catching all of it but i'm catching the vast majority of it It's just so much easier to get this material to size with this machine and get a good finish on it. And that's why I like you know, grinding it. So I'm just stepping it down so I don't have to put so much pressure on it. This stuff's pretty rigid and this may not be necessary, but uh, it works. We finally got the rest of this wood split up, me and my dad. Big thanks to him. And uh, hopefully this will be enough to last us all winter. You know, we'll see. If it's anything like last winter here in Kentucky, it was just long and cold. It stayed not crazy cold, you know, in the 30s, but it was like it never left the 30s all winter. And it was, you know, a late, or a late spring, so winter lasted forever. We used more wood last year than I can ever remember using. Hopefully, this will last. But we got to get this off the ground and get it covered up, or else it just won't burn. So, that's what we're doing. Stacking what's left our wood pile. It's been a crazy busy week. Our kids went back to school this week. And, uh,. We had a unfortunate family passing this week, uh, which everybody deals with here and there. And, uh, you know, all the other things that go along with uh, this kind of life. So, busy for sure. Just like always, nothing's changed. This is what it looks like when the water runs heavy. We just had a pretty good rain. Probably deep, deep, deep. You can hear the big rocks. Here is a shot of the falls behind the shop that I show off. And, you know, the water at this point had come down a couple of feet at least. 
you know, it can go from a little trickle to a full-blown flood, depending on how heavy it rains, in 15 minutes. It's scary how fast the, the water can come up in these small creeks. Uh, final sizing. After 310, let's do the 300, and we're 310 and about two tenths. So I'm not just going to leave that alone because it's actually plenty close enough. As long as we're in a, within a thousandth or so on this, we should be good. I'm happy with that. Right. Now I'm going to cut this off and then I'll put it in a collet and try to work this front. I forget who said it, but. Uh, Somebody said the cutter grinder is the uh, Swiss Army knife of the machine shop, and I agree with that. And this is a extremely you know, versatile machine, but it's a tough machine to learn. It's just grinding in general is you know not like anything I've ever done before. It's uh, you know a subject of its own, of course, and uh, a little intimidating. But once you get going, it's really not that bad. You really just got to dive in and do it. Uh, that's all I've done. So I'm gonna pull this out so I don't break it because we don't care if we get a little. You know, uh, the end is not completely concentric, so pulling this out uh, won't hurt a thing. It's not that critical, to be honest. I'll set it where where I won't break it. That way I can change this wheel without. Uh, worrying about breaking it off. I broke the first one off, but it broke off exactly where I wanted. But first one that I done, this is actually the second one. I made this uh, wrench, or this uh, socket. I took a uh, just a 17 millimeter socket and I made a brand new nut also. Here's a little closer look at that uh, socket. You know, they're already hard. And uh, with a grinder, you know, I just ground down two lugs. There's the nut I made. The original nut uh, was getting quite wore, and uh, my wrench would slip on it pretty easy. So I just made uh, you know, a new one that uh, fits pretty good. So. Makes it easier. Plus, I can put an extension on this if I got a you know deep wheel. I can uh, just use a ratchet. Makes it makes just makes life easier. All right, I'm gonna put a cutting disc on here and get back set up, and then I'll bring you back and we'll part it off. All right, so we switched out, changed to a cutting disc, and this wouldn't work if this was fully fired ceramic. It would definitely be too hard, I believe. Um, I've never tried to cut ceramic with one of these, but I don't think it works very well. It's pretty much a diamond only uh, uh, material, really. So I'm going to get this started. I'll bring you in closer and we'll cut this off and then we'll start working our feature up front. Good, uh, good part. All right, now let's get set up to uh, work our front feature. Okay, I got my 5 16th collet in here. This collet, along with these, were sent to me uh, by Jim Lichty. Now, I was missing some out of the set that I had bought off eBay the other day, and uh, Jim went through his extras and sent me the ones 
that I was missing other than a 1764 and then there's a couple sizes over an inch that I'm missing but you know that's no big deal and uh, holding this in a call it's really you know the way to go if you was to hold this in a three jaw if you get any uneven pressure on it it'd be prone to bust and crack a call it kind of you know squeezes on the whole thing so you're a lot less likely to damage it by holding it and uh, I heard Jim's name, Jim Lichty's name, uh, said by Mr. Pete or Lyle Peterson the other day, your YouTube shop teacher, and uh, Keith Finner. So, uh, you know, Jim's no stranger to helping out the YouTube guys. So thank you, Jim. I appreciate it. I'm getting good use out of it right now. Now I've got my abrasive blade in here right now. I'm going to come in and machine a slot in this, and then I'll have to change to a diamond wheel and reduce the end a little bit and then this thing will be pretty much done so I'm gonna get my dust mask on and we'll get this guy finished up the head down a little and we're done. Man, that stuff is abrasive. It even uh, put some wear on that diamond wheel. It's just I guess the nature of the material, I don't know. Like, it uh, reminds me of uh, you know, these white uh, um, wheel, diamond wheel cleaners, in a way. There we go. Pretty simple, but uh, you know, not necessarily a simple material to work with, at least in my opinion. Well, the garden's just about played out. I'm gonna be going over these two rows for the second time and just getting the ones that were a little too small to pick on the first go around. This will really be it. See and get it. Well, this ain't gonna hold it. No. And this lower garden sure has changed in, since last week. Let me bring you in and uh, get you a closer look at this corn. Well, I'd say, you know, another week and a half, this will be probably ready to go through for the first time, and then we'll have to, of course, just like the other one up there, you know, go through it twice. So, as soon as it gets ready, we pull it, because otherwise the coons get it. So, if it's ready, it comes off and then we usually go through it again you know if the coons get the second uh, second pulling that's not as bad but uh, we want the best part ourselves well it's kind of hard to tell from all the weeds but there are actually tomatoes here they just haven't done very good this year uh, last year we had a surplus of tomatoes and uh, we're actually we're still eating on them but uh, doesn't look like that's going to be the case this year you know sometimes they do good sometimes they don't our beans didn't do good this year either but they did last year so you just never know. Another thing I've been doing this week is uh, I've made a couple of little boring bars just 
for fun uh, out of uh, you know, one this one is a actually a, a 3 8 drill uh, made out of a broken carbide drill this one is a four fluted end mill just like this one that I turned down and this one's destined to be a, uh, a boring bore also it's got a big old chip out of it by the time I cut this off it'd be just a nub and I've got plenty of these old broken carbide end mills so I'm going to turn this one into a, uh, a bar similar to this one. This one's not done, but, uh, and this one I've never used. So this is the little holder that I made a while back on video. You know, a little simple thing, but comes in handy. 3 8 shanks for these short 3 8 bars. Let's uh, take it over the lathe. I got a job for it actually uh, right now. So let's go try it out. All right, in the lathe here, we have another hub that I'm making for my cutter grinder, a wheel hub. And uh, I think this will be a good uh, test for this shop made boring bar. I love these little carbide bars. Man, I broke my good one um, just the other day. Just a little quarter inch bar, but man, I love that thing. It cut so well. It was short and rigid and uh, done a great job. And I used my height gauge to uh, set my tool height. Height? Man, people sure get bent out of shape if you. Uh, pronounce a word incorrectly um, <laughs> there's a lot of words that get pronounced incorrectly around here and uh, I'd have to say though I, I agree with him if you should if you can pronounce it properly you should uh, but in case you haven't noticed this is not an English class <laughs> but uh, like I said I agree with him now I think this will be a good test for this thing. So let's uh, get the camera turned around and cut this guy. All right, shop made boring bar test number one. <laughs> quite a bit of metal here in order for my parting blade to uh, part this off and I figured I'd show this because uh, I don't want to be here all day removing this material I'm just going to do it in one pass we're going to do uh, actual 
hundred thousandths. We're going to remove two hundred from the uh, diameter, but hundred thousandths step to the cut. And uh, this is a DNMG insert. And that's a pretty good, uh, you know, cut. But this lathe will do this all day, but it's still pretty neat to watch. So I'm going to get some cooling on here. I'll bring you in and let you see it. for that insert though. But the lathe has no problem you know, pulling the chip like that. Woo! Pop. Of course. The last cut. I just let it run on into the uh, to the other cut. It's a quarter inch basically. So it's moving almost a half inch off the OD of that. It doesn't like that though. You can see these chips. You know, not, you know, you really want that. I like when they break up you know, manageable, manageable pieces. So, this lathe will do it, that's for sure. Yeah, let's, uh, let's park the scowl. I mean, everybody's seen this before, but uh, well, good operation. So I apologize for that, but uh, it is what it is. The board and bar done pretty good, I think. Uh, pretty decent finish, and uh, we took a pretty heavy cut with it and held up fine. So I think it'll be more than adequate. This one still needs a lot of work before it's finished. And then uh, maybe next week we'll make one of these. They're not really that hard, but they're uh, they're pretty actually pretty fun to make. You just got to be careful grinding this carbide. Need our slots and our paper, and then we'll have another hub, and we'll have to you know, make a nut too. So, but like I said, not too bad. We've all done this, you know, for, we've seen this before, so very good. Let's uh, let's do a little viewer mail real quick, then we'll finish this out. Now, uh, George Stone. Uh, meet, I met him at the meet and greet here in Louisville. I got viewer mail from two guys there. Uh, sent me George sent me a V block, which would be great for the uh, drill press. Just a rough V block, but uh, you know, for a drill press, that's uh, all you need. I didn't actually have a rough set. And uh, he also sent me a grinding wheel hub, which I've already mounted to a wheel and uh, have used twice already. So 
thanks. I really, really appreciate that. That'll save me from, uh, you know, having to make uh, at least one extra. So let's go outside. I got a pretty neat tool that was sent to me by Timothy. I met him, Timothy, uh, with the, I met him at uh, the meet and greet also. All right, guys, now Timothy sent me, it's a model MP-3 grinder of some sort. He didn't know nothing about it, and I haven't had a chance to look it up. Yeah, I think he said it was his father's, and he didn't even have an air compressor that would run it. And, um, you know, I can see why. I just oiled this thing, so it may spit out a little oil. But uh, this thing is a beast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you'd use this thing for. It probably weighs 10 pounds. Uh, maybe sharpening a batwing tractor mower's blade or something like that. But, uh, you know, if I ever have to do that, I'll thank you, Timothy. So, thank you. <laughs> well, guys, I think that's about it for this week. Um, that was pretty interesting, I think, grinding that ceramic. At least, you know, doing it was uh, definitely a new experience for me, and I'm always about that. You know, anything new that will expand my, you know, uh, uh, knowledge, even just a little, is, uh, is a bonus for me. So grinding that ceramic was something new. You know, it wasn't fully hardened ceramic, but uh, ground more like chalk, to be honest. Um, but that stuff, eat high-speed steel like, uh, you know, nobody's business within a few seconds, you know, we would eat the, the sharp edge off of a piece, so I think grinding was the best way to approach it. Um, could have ground it wet, would have probably been a safer method, but with a dust mask and a good dust collection system, you know, we caught the majority of it, and I didn't have any, I didn't want to use straight water on that machine, and I didn't have anything but coolness, so I didn't know how that would interact in the conditions that it's going to be used under, so I chose to grind it dry. That's the reason anyway. I'd like to say thanks to all my old subscribers and thanks to all my new ones. I've got probably a thousand or, or more this week, probably over a thousand this week, which is a big number. Thanks to Adam Booth. So I appreciate you guys coming over and I hope you enjoy the channel. Uh, of course, thanks to my patrons. You know, you guys are awesome and thanks for sticking with me. And uh, if you haven't, make sure to subscribe to the channel. You can do that by clicking on my little guy up here. If you need anything, here's my email and hit the bell for notifications. And as always, I'll see you next time.